أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد My dear viewers everywhere السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Almighty Allah has stated in verse number 184 of Surah Al-Baqarah the following holy verse Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa an tasumu khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'lamun The Almighty Allah of in the Surah Al-Baqarah ayah 183 and 184 alludes to two important points about fasting in verse 183 the Almighty states the whole purpose the whole objective of fasting he says ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon O those who believe the fasting have been prescribed to you as it has been prescribed to people of antiquity, to those before you, so you reach piety. The purpose of fasting simply stated in this word, that you attain piety. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rank us based on our piety and God-fearing position. As Muslims, we all believe that our life will not end at the end of this physical life. Rather, we are changing, we are transforming to another eternal life that is called the hereafter. That is the most important life. That is the one that we should take extra care to make sure that we succeed in that life. This life, we can spend it in any way we can but we should make sure that our hereafter life should be with equality should be successful the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you observe fasting you will make sure that the quality of your life in the hereafter will be successful you will be considered succeeding therefore he says that when you observe fasting you will be reaching piety we know that god will rank us will qualify us and will put us in classifications based on our piety if we have more piety the better situated we will be as the almighty has said in akramakum and allahi atqakum those who are the most fearful of God, the most pious, they will be considered the most favorable. So we gain our prestige, we gain our highest level in the hereafter by piety. The more pious we are, the better we will be in the hereafter. And fasting will make sure that we reach that level of piety. This is the purpose of fasting. And that all pertains to the hereafter, to the quality of life in the hereafter. However, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, due to his beneficent nature, he also makes sure that the quality of life in this life also should be good and should be healthy. Therefore, he says, وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ if you observe fasting in this life, you will see the benefit of it in this life. You will be having a better quality of life. You will be considered healthy and respectful in this life. So those two great verses, number 183 and 184, both fix two of our lives, this life, the one that we live in currently and the hereafter. Now, we would like to see what kind of benefits 
we will be gaining by observing fasting. As we have alluded in the previous night, we said that it promotes our spiritual well-being. Fasting will help our spirituality. We have said that if we observe fasting with sincerity, with full intention to fulfill the desire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are guaranteed for the following. Number one, we will be forgiven. All our sins will be forgiven. Second, all our deeds, actions, supplications, and prayers will be accepted. Third, we will be discharged from the hellfire. And fourth, four of the, uh, number four, is that our actions, our deeds, our prayers and supplications, all will be multiplied. The rewards that we will get will be in multiplications, not a single one, not a twice, rather in ample. As the Almighty has said, Laylatul Qadri khayrun min al -fishar. Meaning that the good deeds that we do during that night of destiny, we will get the reward more than as if we do the same thing over and over for more than 30,000 nights in, in other nights than the night of destiny in the holy month of Ramadan. These benefits pertain to our spirituality. But what else? How does fasting help us on personal level? Number one, when we observe fasting, we increase our resistance. We will ensure that we will have resistance in front of the internal enemy and the external enemy, the external danger. Internal enemy is presented by our commanding soul, and nafsul ammara, that is always chasing us, pursuing us to do negatives, to do profanity, to do commit sins. This desirable or this commanding soul that always seeks desires does not stop at any limit. Always push us to increase our indulgence, to increase our physical desires and indulgence. It does not recognize any limit. Therefore, we need something to resist that commanding soul. Observing fasting will help our resistance in front of that commanding soul. If we abstain, from the lawful, permissible food and a drink during the month of Ramadan, obviously we can resist the unlawful foods and drinks and acts that God has forbidden us from doing in other time of the year. If we can abstain from lawful things during the month of Ramadan, we will be able to abstain from unlawful things during the other times of the year that God has prohibited us from doing so. So that will increase our resistance in front of the internal en enemy, which is our commanding soul. It also helps us against the external threat. It will make us adept. We get adopted to the harsh environments. Sometimes life is not easy. Many countries and nations face famine, shortage in food, shortage in a drink, starvation. Sometimes they are sanctioned by other countries, by other nations. Therefore, fasting will help us rehearse those moments if one day they arrive. Just like any country, any government, when they do military drills, and military exercises, they make sure that their soldiers and the army as a whole are prepared for the moments of dangers. The same thing when we observe fasting, we prepare our bodies and our soul for the time of danger, for the time of a scarce food and a drink. Here Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, has a beautiful word. He says, Ala wa inna shajarat al-barriya 
أصل بعودا والروائع الخضرة أرق جلودا He said that the desert palms have and trees have a greater stamina and are sturdier than and more endurable than the green pastures that always have water and irrigated regularly. Those desert palms and desert trees can weather the harsh environment. Then can, they can resist the heat, extreme heat, extreme cold in winter, in summer. Then can, they can resist this harsh environment. Just the opposite of the green posture. The green plants that can die once fall or winter arrives. They cannot resist the harsh environment. Why? Because they've never been exposed to such kind of environment. We need to make our soul and bodies sturdy by experiencing, by having some sort of exercise for feeling the hunger and thirst that will increase our resistance. The second benefit that we will get is on the social aspect. You see, brothers and sisters, the society, the community is filled with different kind of people, with the rich, with the middle class, and with the low class, with the poor people. They all live in one community. The social scientists say that many crimes and many unrest are due to this inequality of life. However, it is not for the inequality between rich and the poor per se. Rather, it is the difference in feelings when the poor feels the difference between him and the rich. At that time, he will show resentment. He will show complaints and that is demonstrated in unrest and in troubles for the community. Therefore, to reduce that feeling of feeling that he's been singled out by the society or community, if the rich and poor are considered to be equal, you will end up seeing the society become safe. As Al-Imam Al-Sadiq says the beauty of fasting is that you will see both the poor and the rich are equal on the same table. Where he says, إِنَّمَا فَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ الصِّيَامِ لِيَسْتَوِي بِهِ الْغَنِيُّ وَالْفَقِيرِ So both the rich and the poor become equal. Both will have same experience. Both will experience the hunger. Both will experience the third. So the poor, so the rich can feel what the poor goes through during the normal times of the year. When the poor feels that the rich also is suffering just like him, that will become a solace for him. That will become a sign of relief. That will make sure the society will be tranquil and peaceful. And the third benefit that we will get from fasting is the health benefits, the medical benefits. You see, brothers and sisters, before the source, the main source of problems, diseases, and, will, and illnesses were shortage in food, were malnutrition. People didn't have enough and different varieties of food to, to eat and to maintain themselves. Therefore, they were suffering a lot. But nowadays, the situation has changed totally, 180 degrees. Nowadays, when you look carefully, you see that most of our chronic diseases and dangerous diseases are due to overfilled stomach because we eat a lot. One problem with obesity, and obesity can cause multiple problems can cause diabetes, can cause, can cause high blood pressure, can cause elevation in cholesterol level in our bodies, 
And those are all sources of dangerous diseases that we will face that can endanger our life. So the best way when we abstain from intake of extra food and a drink, we flush our body. We flush our veins and arteries. We clean up those things as we clean up our rooms, as we clean up our offices and our homes, when we take away the old stuff and we remove the dust from the furniture that we live in, in, in our homes. The same thing, our body, our stomach needs to be resting. Therefore, when we do fasting, it is the best time for our stomachs and for our internal body organs to rest a little bit and flush our body from the extra material, the waste material. Inshallah, God willing, in the next episode, we will be talking more about the medical benefits of fasting. يا غافر الخطايا يا كاشف البلايا يا منتهى الرجايا يا مجزل العطايا يا واهب الهدايا يا رازق البرايا يا قاضي المنايا يا سامع الشكايا يا باعث البرايا يا مطلق الأسارى سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا ذا الحمد والثناء يا ذا الفخر والبهاء يا ذا المجد والسناء يا ذا العهد والوفاء يا ذا العفو والرضا يا ذا المن والعطاء يا ذا الفصل والقضاء يا ذا العز والبقاء يا ذا الجود والسخاء يا ذا الآلاء والنعماء سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب اللهم إني أسألك باسمك يا مانع يا دافع يا رافع يا صانع يا نافع يا سامع يا جامع يا شافع يا واسع يا موسع سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب Welcome back. In this segment, we are translating the beautiful words of the supplication of Jaushan al-Kirbir. We have reached segment number seven. The theme of segment number seven is that to disperse calamities and hardship, where it says, Ya ghafir al-khataya, ya kashif al-balaya, ya muntah al-rajaya, 
يا مجزل العطايا يا واهب الهدايا يا رازق البرايا يا قاضي المنايا يا سامع الشكايا يا باعث البرايا يا مطلق الأسارة It says forgiver of the sins dispeller of turbulations aims of hopes giver of abundant gifts bestowers of bounties providers of creatures judge of destinies hearer of complaints resurrector of creatures and freer of the captives during our daily lives we always face hardships and difficulties part of this nature is difficulties hardships and sometimes disasters mm -hmm. and tragedies we never know when when a disaster strike when a tragedy happens we go about our daily activities we start our day by going to work and doing our activities but we never know what is hidden for us therefore we take refuge to god to disperse these calamities away to push them away otherwise when we are independent when we depend only on ourselves we run into trouble therefore we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fix our problems to remove the troubles away ali ibn abi talib in the beautiful dua al sabah he says faftah allahumma lana masari' al sabah bi mafatih ar rahmati wal falah at the beginning of each day in early morning recite this beautiful dua of al sabah the dua of morning where the imam alayhi salam says o oh, the lord open the doors and gates of mercy and a bless and a blessing upon us so i don't waste our time fixing the problems trouble shooting rather i should have a smooth day taken refuge to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to disperse the calamity the second word is ya ghafir al khataya ya kashif al balaya there is an inherent connection between the mistakes sins and tragedies and disasters why because most of those disasters and tragedies and troubles that we see are due to our own actions we are the ones who have caused them we are the one who were the main cause of those troubles today look around you you see the global warming the greenhouse effects the higher mortality due to cancers to different kind of viruses that every day they strike they are due to what many of those are due to the mishandling of a human being of the nature the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت ايدي الناس when you see corruption when you see spoil in the nature it is all due to the work of a human being it is us that we bring troubles then when we bring a trouble when we commit sins and crimes god renews the tragedy al imam al radha alayhi salam has a beautiful word he says kullama ahdath al ibad min al dhunub ma lam yakunu ya'lamun whenever they invent a sin and wrong doing then ahdath allah lahum min al bala'i ma lam yakunu ya'rifun god will punish them with a new kind of punishment that they never knew look at the type of sickness start with cancer then we had back in the 80s we had aids then did you hear about the mad cow disease did you hear about the sar virus did you hear about the swine flu and recently the zika vi the virus all of those are new inventions why due to us that invent mistakes and sins god will invent these type of tragedies and disasters for us so the almighty says when you ask repentance when you get forgiven from your sins also those tragedies will be removed the eighth segment is about seeking redemption and pardon where it says ya dal hamdi wa thana 
يا ذا الفخر والبهاء يا ذا المجد والسناء يا ذا العهد والوفاء يا ذا العفو والرضا يا ذا المن والعطاء يا ذا الفضل والقضاء يا ذا العز والبقاء بقاء يا ذا الجود والسخاء يا ذا الآلاء والنعماء The segment, the word that it says يا ذا العفو والرضا The forgiveness and satisfaction of God God will be angry at last The patience of God, the forbearance of God is a humongous beyond imagination when he is angry at someone he will be very satisfied very quickly as the prayers of Ali ibn Abi Talib says Ya Siri Ar-Rida God will be satisfied easily when the servant when a human ask repentance in fact God would be very elated to see us seeking repentance and forgiveness in the hadith by Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says in Allah ta'ala ashaddu farahan bitawbati abdihi min rajulin dhalla rahilatahu wazadahu fi laylatin dhalma fawajadaha God will be more elated than the person, the rider who has lost his ride during the night, in the middle of night that had his even his subsistence food and money on that ride and it got lost that ride meaning the camel or the the cattle that he was riding on when he finds that cattle and that camel how elated he would be because he has been saved God will be more elated to see that his servant is returning back to him that's why Ali ibn Abi Talib says Ya Sari Ar Rida Ikhfir Liman La Yimliku Illa Dua and the segment nine, it's to clear away fear and disease and to elevate the rank. Where it says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika, ya mani'u, ya dafi'u, ya rafi'u, ya sani'u, ya nafi'u, ya sami'u, ya jami'u, ya shafi'u, ya wasi'u, you, ya musi'u. There are many people who think what they have done is due to their power and their achievement. They attribute their achievement to their energy and to their brain, brain and their own power and strength. While they are very not, they lose mind and they lose thought of the fact it is him who has given them the power, the wisdom, the guidance to succeed. When I empower myself, when I become rich or powerful or wealthy, I always attribute my success to myself. The Almighty Allah says, wait a minute. These are all due to blessings that I have given you. He teaches his prophet, says, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى If you think that you became victorious in the battle due to your resources, resourcefulness and being smart, think again. It is because of the Almighty who has helped you to fight the mushrikeen and be victorious. Always we should ask God to elevate our ranks. We never should be resorting to our own. Yes, we will struggle, we will strive, but we should not be overconfident of ourselves. How appropriate are these illustrations and effective admonitions provided they are received by pure hearts. Open ears, firm views and sharp wits. Fear Allah like him who listened good advice and bowed before it. When he committed sin, he admitted it. When he felt feared, he acted virtuously. When he apprehended, he hastened towards good acts. When he believed, he performed virtuous acts. When he was asked to take lesson from the happenings of this world, he did take lesson. When he was asked to resist, he abstained from evil. When he responded to the call of Allah, he leaned towards him. When he turned back to evil, he repented. When he followed, he almost imitated and when he was shown the right path, 
he saw it. Such a man was busy in search of truth and got rid of the worldly evils by running away. He collected provisions of good acts for himself, purified his inner self, built for the next world and took with himself provisions for the day of his departure, keeping in view his journey, his requirement and the position of his need. He sent ahead of him for the abode of his stay in the next world.